Amen. Happy New Year. West End, we hadn't seen you since last year. We are week into the year now, and I just wish everybody the most blessed and prosperous year. Um, before we get in this message, I just want to uh, say a couple of things that this year, um, to those who are online and you are local, uh, make a commitment to be in the church. Make a commitment to be in the church. Um, um, uh, uh, one thing that COVID has done for us, and even though we're a couple of years past COVID, as we've become very comfortable in our spaces. And when we become comfortable in our spaces, we become lackadaisical. And that's when things sneak up on us. But this year, we have to make the effort to come out of our comfortability. Go into those places that, that when, when, when you know, uh, 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 mm, it's easier just to flip that internet, spin the computer around. It is easy. But tell yourself, not today. I'm going to get up and I'm going into church today. Why? Because you're, we, our brains work in a certain way. And once you give it a neural pathway that is easy, it's always going to take that route. So when it comes down to something you really need to do, you're going to struggle because you made this pathway of, of resistance to having to do. And so when you have to do, you're going to struggle to do because you taught yourself not to do. So uh, if you're online, find your way into church. Uh, for those of us who are here, now our job is to take our comfortability in being here to the next level. Get rid of it. It's time to worship in a way like we've never worshiped before. We come in every week through the same motions. You have to tell yourself, not this week. Not this week. This week, I'm going to wave my hand. This week, I'm going to move. This week, I'm going to do something different. This week, I'm going to show God that I'm committed to this thing. For all that he's done for us, I'm going to show him I'm going to do something new. I know he already knows what I'm capable of doing, but I don't know what I'm capable of doing. So I'm going to challenge myself to do something that's irregular. I'm going to challenge myself to be radical. Mm -hmm. And see, radical means different for you than it means to me. So radical to you may be just this. Because you've never done it. For some of us, radical may mean taking it to another level or whatever. Whatever that radical is to you, that's what you need to concentrate on. This year, I'm going to come out of it. I'm going to be the source of the power of God to use me. You know, people always want God to use them. And you say, I'm available. God says, you're not. Because if I put it in you to do it, you won't even come to church. If you're here, if I put it in you to you to go and lay hands on somebody, you won't even wave your hands to give me glory. How can I use you? So you have to get in yourself and say, I'm going to be radical this year. I'm going to do things that not only, see, the problem is when we get ready to do something that's not usually like us, we are afraid of what the next person is going to say. And so we don't do it because I'm thinking, well, what babe's going to say if I run around the altar? Who cares what babe's going to say? She didn't save me. He didn't. And in midnight hour when I could not express to my wife, God, he's the one who... And so whatever you feel is radical, it's between you and God. Just do it. Just do it. All right. All right. All right. So let's go to Ephesians. 
the fourth chapter, verses 22 through 24, Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. This year, I'm going to challenge you in every aspect of your life. This year, I'm going to make you so uncomfortable. Either you're going to say, I'm going to pick this thing up and we're going to do it. Or I'm going to have to tell Bishop, see you later. Because you're not going to be able to sit under this word and hear the teaching that's going to come forth this year and just sit there and do nothing. It's going to require you to do something. Move in here or move out of here. Because like, like Pastor V said, it is important for us to work and do our work so we can live. It's time for the kingdom of God to manifest in our lives. Name it and claiming it and all of that stuff, talking about it. You know, uh, how long must I look down the road for the manifestation? And God is saying, well, you looking down the road. You have a determination in this process to make your life look very different than it does. So Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 22 to 24. I'm going to read from the King James Version and uh, the New Living Translation. So the words recorded that ye put off the concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The New Living Translation says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupt by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So our empowering thought for today is the power of your thoughts. The power of your thoughts. Your thoughts are very powerful. Um, um, I, I might be showing my age here a little bit, but I grew up hearing a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Come on. So y'all showing y'all age too. All right. I don't feel bad now when I said that. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. So today after this message, I want that meaning to take on something very different for you today because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Where you spend your time thinking is going to show in your life. Let me say that again. Where you spend your time thinking is going to manifest in your life. It is important to understand that our minds are like a powerful control center. Uh, uh, the, the, the fastest, strongest computer you've ever seen. Your mind is generating thoughts constantly throughout the day. Sometimes you think you're not thinking, but you're thinking. It is constantly moving, constantly generating thoughts, constantly seeing something, and a thought connects. And it is constantly operating. And, and, and so what happens is so these thoughts can be positive, negative, or sometimes they're even neutral. You just... And sometimes you say, I don't know where that came from. So, so, so the important thing to rem remember is that your thoughts have significant impact on how you feel. 
not only how you feel, but how you navigate through life and how we feel when we get so wrapped up in our thoughts. Your thoughts. Now, now we don't really think of it this way because we try to keep church separated from science, but you can't because they're all one. You can't do it. You can't do it. So, so, so your thoughts are so powerful that they have made you what you are. So when you look in the mirror, that's your thoughts. And so when you look at somebody else, you're saying, wow, they've thought all of this up. And now that's what they are. Now, when I said that, most of you thought of something negative. Come on, somebody. Let's be honest. Very rare do we look at somebody and we say, wow, that's amazing. When somebody's preaching and we give them a message, the first thing you think of is the negativity. Why? Because we have been conditioned in church to think that way. So if I, I'm telling you that your thoughts make up your life, most of our thoughts went to, I'm not where I want to be. Because you have been conditioned to believe that way. I'm not where I want to be. Versus being conditioned to believe that your thoughts are even if you're not where you want to be, there are stepping stones for you to be. But since I've been little, I've always been taught, if you're not where you want to be, clean up your life. Well, maybe my life's not dirty. So I'm trying to clean something that's not even dirty, and I'm still not getting anywhere because I'm washing clean sneakers. And sooner or later, if I wash them too much, then the logo is going to come off. So my identity as a Christian will fade away. Come on, somebody. Because I'm working to do something that does not need to be done. So in the, in the psychology world, and, and DeAndre may be able to help me with this, there's a cognitive behavioral therapy model. I like this. So this is what the model says, that events lead to thoughts, thoughts lead to feelings, feelings lead to behaviors or actions, and your behavior or actions always have a consequence. Y'all with me? Now, I'm not a doctor in any way, but I want to add something to this model that will help us, especially in the church. So you understand it. Those of you taking notes, write this down. So the model states that events, first you need to understand that the event is always neutral. Life is always neutral. You add all the other stuff to it. Life is also, the event is always neutral. This is the part I'm adding. Filtered through our faith, our belief system, it leads to thoughts. When it's filtered through our faith, our belief systems, and I'm saying faith, our belief systems, because we all have all kinds of stuff we believe. It leads to thoughts. So if we have been conditioned to believe that Satan is round the corner everywhere, waiting to get us and trip us up so we can go to hell, that belief 
now filters to thoughts. So I'm afraid to go around the corner because Satan is waiting for me versus understanding that the Spirit of God is leading and guiding me and directing me in all my ways. I have nothing to fear. So if I've been conditioned to believe that God is in me and he has my back and all things work for my good, I will take on any challenge. Come on, somebody. Am I right? So the filtering, the faith, or your belief system has a significant role and how you think. Are y'all still with me? All right. So now, it filters leads to those thoughts. Those thoughts can be positive or negative. Those thoughts leads to your feelings, which could be positive or negative. What do you believe? So if something happens, and this is how I know we are conditioned to believe that way. If something happens, ah, I'll give you the hurt because we love crying. The wife is murdered. And they always look at the spouse. Right? Automatically. Now, he may have had nothing to do with it, but if he keeps the event neutral, what are they going to say? He's not acting like he should because we have been conditioned to believe you should act a certain, come on, somebody. You should be acting a certain way based on man's opinion now you he may just be a person who understands God and that events are happen and he know I ain't had nothing to do with it so I'm processing this it is a loss to me but I understand that this event is neutral and I can't get my feelings all up in here because I can't operate that way because not only that I have a life still to live but I have children I'm responsible for come on somebody but if he said that what are they going to say? He guilty. He did it. Am I right? Because we've been conditioned to believe in that way. So, so, so your thoughts leave the feelings. Your feelings leave to your behaviors or actions, which could be positive or negative. You know how we say, I'm feeling some kind of way. Come on, somebody. That's because you just didn't just automatically feel that kind of way. You've been thinking about something. Something has triggered you to have this feeling some kind of way. Now, we won't admit it, but it goes back to something that happened to us a long time ago. Has nothing to do with this situation, but because we have not been healed, it pops up every time in our lives directing us to feel a certain way and instead of finding healing we allow that child in us to dictate your adult life y'all with me we need to really understand this because no longer shall we allow our thoughts to control our lives. Today, we take back control. So those who are writing, let me just read that one more time because I expanded it a little bit. The model states that events, which are neutral, filtered through your faith or belief system, leads to thoughts 
Your thoughts lead to your feelings. Your feelings lead to your behaviors or actions. And your behavior or actions always have a consequence, which could be positive or negative. Here is where the church gets stuck. We never think about the consequences. And he said, no, no, we people of God, yes. And so when we hurt people in the church, we don't think of the consequences that it brings not only yourself, but them. We don't think that this might be the thing they can't recover from. We don't think that because of their childhood, they have never felt love. And you come into the church where we say Christ love everybody. And then you say, well, homosexuality is this and that and that. We don't think of the hurt that is doing to the church. Well, I thought God was a God of unconditional love. He doesn't care about none of that stuff. He died for the sins. Didn't about the Bible says he came to take away the sin of the world. So if the sin is gone, then why are we stop hurting people in the church? Because we don't think about the consequences that our thoughts lead to. Most of the stuff we do in church is a man-made doctrine, not even lining up with the word of God. We are attacking, criticizing, taking down people. And the thing is, we don't even care. You mean to tell me the loving God that's inside of me is inside of you and nothing filters that? That we can act any way, however we want to treat people, however we want to do to people, whatever we want to, and then say it's in the name of Jesus? It can't be. Because our filtering system is corrupt. Let me get back. First point. If you control your thoughts, you control your life. I tell you never get out of my head. You don't know what I'm thinking. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm experiencing. Get out of my head. Focus on your stuff. What is going on in your head? The reason we are so messed up is we thinking about everybody else's stuff and our stuff is out of control. Pastor V always say, you got all of these thoughts running around in your mind with no adult supervision. Tell somebody, I'm the adult now. And I'm going to take control of these thoughts. And they're going to line up how I want them to line up. Random thoughts are not going to take over my mind and make me do stuff. No, I'm in control. So you control your thoughts. You control your life they're always going to be events tell somebody something's always going to happen life is an event it is always going to happen there's nothing you can do about life happening it's going to happen how you see it makes the difference and so life it's all going to go So your moods and your behaviors that you are experiencing because of life is because you have not brought your thoughts under control. How are you going to go off on somebody and your tire flat? <laughs> it's your tire is flat. I'm just here to help you with it. 
And then you're going to talk to me. Well, I called for the, 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 the triple A two hours ago. Well, your life is not the only life happening. I was helping somebody else. Well, I don't care about that. It's my tire. I got to go to work because you think the world's revolving around you because you cannot control those thoughts. I got to get to work. I got everybody else is saying the same thing. I got to get to work. It's your fault. You haven't bought tires in 10 years. Then you're going to turn around and say, well, see how God kept me for 10 years. No, he's been telling you to change those tires five years ago. The time to stop saying, look at God. God said, no, look at you. <laughs> Won't he do it? <laughs> and so we have to gain control over our thoughts when we gain control over your thoughts you gain control over your feelings and actions but you got to make sure your filter is right tell somebody your filter got to be right Ooh. so 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 what are the filters so let me tell you what the filters are your filters are all those things that shape the lenses we view the world through I wear glasses. If I didn't wear glasses, well, we all do it every year or two. We go get an eye exam. And he says, one or two, two, two or three, three, three or four. Can you go back to one? <laughs> Come on. Don't we all do it? Because he's adjusting the lenses to your vision, right? And so the filters are your experiences that have brought you to the, everything that has influenced you through your life, those the what you filter through. So your siblings, your family, mom, dad, your, your upbringing, the culture, the society you live in, uh, those things you've heard, and shouldn't have heard those things you've seen and shouldn't have seen. Uh, even religion makes your filter a certain way. And, and, and especially us in the black church, because we've been conditioned to believe the Bible in a certain way. So we are always looking for a certain way for God to come and a certain way for Satan to attack. We, and then if you talk about angels, now nah, he say, don't you, you be careful how you do angel. It, because that's the way we've been conditioned to believe. And so when something happens in our lives, that filter, it comes right through that event, comes through the filter. And based on those things that influence your belief system, that's what you see. So how can Jesus come to a city, throng with crowds of people, and one lady get healed. Her filter said, I don't care. I am ready to do something radical to experience his healing. The rest of them are just religious people. He going to preach today. Not knowing that your healing is right there. Not knowing that whatever you're going through can be taken care of in an instant if your thinking was where it's supposed to be. Out of the whole crowd, including the disciples, only one person had their thoughts where it was supposed to be. I'm going to be healed today. I'm willing to crawl on the ground, get stepped on. I don't know how she know which hymn was Jesus hymn, but somehow or another she reached it. And she said, today I'm going to get healed. 
you, if you understand what the law was, whenever she came around, she was supposed to say unclean so that others can clear a room for her. But she didn't care. She said, I'm going to be rattled. I'm going against the man law and I'm going to crawl and I'm going to scooch till I get my healing because that's what I need today. I don't care why everybody else is here. I know why I'm here. And I'm going to do something radical because they can be the norm crowd coming to hear a Sunday morning message. But I'm sick and tired of hearing a Sunday morning message, leaving out of here the same way I came in, talking about claiming it and nothing is happening. She said, I'm going to change that today. And when she got up, everything in her told her, don't do it. Everybody else, you already spent your money. Everybody already, you have done everything. The doctors already told you there's no reason for you. But she said, thoughts, shut up. Not today. Because I don't care what you're saying. Today, I'm going to control you because I got to get what I need. Tell somebody you got to control. And so what I want you to understand is you have to be mindful of your filters. Tell somebody you got to be mindful. See, there's not a problem with what you believe. It becomes a problem when you force it on somebody else. There's not a problem with what you believe. I just had a conversation this week. The gentleman was explaining to me what the church should be doing and how the church should be operating. And boy, he knew his stuff. I was like, man, you ought to be pastor somewhere. Shucks, you good. I said, but, I said, but let me ask you a question. I said, is that something somebody taught you or is that something you believe? And he said, what you being a, well, I won't say what he said. <laughs> you be wise. I said, no, I just want to know, is this something you were taught or is this something you believe? Why? I believe everything I'm taught. No, you don't. I said, don't even, don't even. That's the biggest lie. I said, so separate what you taught from what you believe and what you believe is true. What you've been taught is just knowledge, information. What do you believe? And he said, well, I, 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 I thought it was kind of harsh. That's all I needed to know. That was some, something somebody taught you, and you thought it was the law. And so you put it into your system, not even trying to study to see if it's true. And now you're trying to make me believe what you don't believe. So, so how are you trying to make me believe something you don't believe? Why, well, you know, I've never thought about it like that. Well, think about it like that. All that stuff moving around in your head. If you don't believe it, stop trying to push it on other folk. Only talk about what you know to believe. If God has been a healer to you, then I'm only going to talk about him being a healer. If he had not have to make a way that is desperate in my life, then there's no reason for me to talk about that. Because I don't know, because I don't believe that, because he had not had to come to me in that way. And so you have to control. Yourself. So be mindful of your filters. I want you to really be mindful. Think about it. When you're entering conversations, people after today, after this moment, after this service, be mindful of your filters. When people are talking to you, be mindful what your perceptions are, what you're perceiving. Be mindful of it because it's filtering through and you're going to say, oh, shucks. That was automatic and it shouldn't be. Because I've been conditioned to believe that way. That's the way when somebody talked to me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. She just black flubbing in her gums. Not knowing that the word, your deliverance could be in the message, but because you said she's just flapping her gums, you're not listening intently, so you may miss your deliverance. So be aware of your filter. Be mindful of those filters. So when you practice mindfulness, you'll become more aware of your thoughts. And if you become more aware of your thoughts, then you can control them. And so your behaviors and actions will change. So what happens? You come to get the thought and somebody, oh, you know that lady, you just can't stand at work. And she come to your desk. May I help you? You have already filtered to you cannot help them. Oh, come on, somebody. Why? Because as soon as you smelt the perfume come around the corner, you had already think, I'm going to try not to be nasty to her, but I don't know. I don't feel a certain way already. And when she gets to my desk and she gets to your desk and she has on the outfit just like yours, it's over. It is over. What? Or she come up with something even cuter than what do you want? And so how are you going to help? The filtering. So you have to become neutral and say, okay, it is what it is. And be able to move from a neutral event and then if it necessary, attach what feelings need to be attached, not the feelings that come up because the feeling that come up that are usually triggers from your past. When you was a child that no longer serves you, you are an adult now. You can talk to somebody with some sense. I hope so anyway, because we are adults. The adult you don't need to say one more time and you go, the adult you doesn't do that. That is something from your childhood that is trying to protect you from a feeling it has because the filter that was put in place. <sighs> Y'all with me? So Colossians 3, 12 through 14 says, so put on then as God chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness against uh, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgive them. For as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. And above all the stuff, Put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. In other words, Paul is saying, listen, put on love. Love covers a multitude of sin. If I look with you with love, then I can counter my triggers. Because your triggers are just coming from a place where you weren't loved. And so now you have the opportunity to heal and put love in that place. So the next person don't have to feel your wrath. Mm. Are y'all with me? Okay. Second point. The power of positive thinking. Now... They said that this is foolishness and new way and 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 it shouldn't be taught in church and 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 because we're giving people a false hope. Okay. So if Paul says to think on these things, which is scripture which is positive thinking, how are we hurting the church? 
Well, why would Paul tell you to think on these things? Because he know your who cussing spirit on scum. <laughs> he know your craziness has been thinking negative for too long. Come on, somebody. He knows that. So he's trying to give you an alternate way of thinking to help you control your craziness. Mm, mm, mm. So, so uh, uh, positive thinking refers to the habit of focusing on optimistic thoughts and expecting favorable outcomes. That's all positive thinking is. If I'm thinking the scripture, he is like a warring lion seeking who he can destroy. Is that positive? If I think that way and believe that way, what is going to happen? I'm going to be scared. Everything that happened, I wonder if that's God. Come on. Well, I can't do that till I'm praying on it and God hadn't told me to move yet. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to fast for a week and then I'm going to get an answer from God. And God is telling you the answer hadn't changed. You can fast for the rest of your life. I came that you may have life and you can have it more. It's not going to change. But, but. We've been conditioned to think negatively. So therefore, that is the first filter that rises up and we, our thoughts filter through. So anything that gives us a challenge, see, you got to watch out the devil busy. He is not busy. He ain't got nothing to do with you. You are too small. For him to concentrate his energy. You won't even come to church. Why the devil need to mess with you? You don't even read a scripture. Why would he? You. Come on. Think about it. How are you spiritually? Think about your spirituality and think about if you had to come face to face with Satan, what would you do? So let's dismiss that. Your job is to say, I am spiritually led 24-7. And it doesn't matter what path I'm on because see, he's directing me positive thinking why is that important because what does jeremiah 29 11 tell us he says i know the plans i have for you and it is a declaration that god says this way plans to prosper you and not to give you hope and expected in. So you looking for doom and God says, I don't have doom in your, I'm going to give you an expected end. Why? Because we've been conditioned to believe a certain way. But when you wake up in the morning, you got to say, hear it at. They ain't ready for me. They ain't ready for all of this glory. That is getting ready to take on this world. They ain't ready for the spirit of God to lead me to my blessings. They ain't ready for those doors to open and the blessings of God is going to overtake me. They ain't ready for it. That's the positive thinking you have to do. So, so why is it important that we maintain a positive mindset? This, DeAndre, I'm going to help you too. Because you, you, she's, you know, she's in that mental stuff. When you are in a positive mindset, your brain releases chemicals, dopamine and endorphins. And those chemicals boost your mood. Come on, somebody. And when your mood is high, your stress goes 
down. As a result, when those chemicals, when you're feeling it, you get motivated, you energetic, and you become resilient because you say, oh, I got this here. here. Yeah, let's do it. You ready to take on the world when you get that positive groove or when those blessings start lining up and you start hitting them one after the other and after the other and you're going from mountaintop to mountaintop and say, oh, I ain't concerned with the valley no more because I'm just going to mountaintop and mountaintop. I know there's a valley. That's a time for me to reprieve and reset and get back on the mountaintop for the next mountaintop. You got to think positive. Why? Because you have to keep them chemicals rolling. Now, here's the science of it. Do you think that's just a consequences? Just something like coincidence? God created you in that way so that when you get into the good mood and your mind is clicking, that everything inside of the chemical balance starts to change inside of you to move you toward what he has for you. Ooh, Jesus. So, so get rid of that negative outlook and get a positive outlook. This is going to be my year. 2024, two plus zero plus two plus four makes eight, means new beginning. We're going to do this, God. This is my year to get all that you have from. This is my year to change my thinking so everything the kingdom has for me will start making way. Tell somebody you got to get positive in your thinking i don't care what life event brings to you you can be in the accident and say oh man i was tired of this car anyway Woo! here it comes i can smell the leather of that escalade mm, i can come on y'all i'm not telling you to get in the accident i'm telling you you have to look at the event and change the event where we've been conditioned to believe whatever event you go, girl, you got to wait for that other shoe to fall. Don't move to that other shoe drop. Then you can, you have to say, ain't no other shoe dropping. This is it. I'm moving forward. And this is not going to hold me up. This is not going to hinder me. Whatever God has for me, I'm going to get it. This is just an event. Everybody experiencing this event. And how it affects you, it doesn't have to affect me in the same way. So you could be sad. I'm going to get up and say, okay, girl, yeah, see you later. And you know, uh -uh. I'm not attaching that to my life. Because, see, you have the choice on whether how this thing is going to affect you. I'm not going to attach that to my life. Well, you know she is sad. She is sad. And I'm going to be happy for her in my experience right because you are in control tell somebody you're in control the other thing we have been conditioned to believe is that people control us nobody control you well you know i gotta be nice to him because he's my boss Ooh, because the spirit almost got me again let me tell you something I'm the presence of God. And this how this thing is going to work out. I'm going to be nice to you because I'm showing you the love of God. But I'm not. You don't have no control over what happens to me. Nothing you do can affect me. Don't it says no weapon. When are we going to start believing that? I'm controlling this. I'm going to be myself. If you don't like it, I'm going to be the best loving person that I can do to manifest the love of God. If that itches you wrong, I'm not going to change because you have nothing to do with how God blesses me. He may use you to bless me, but you don't control that either. <clears throat> Tell somebody you got to get that positive thinking. 
And that's why in Philippians 4, 8, Paul says that finally, brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are honorable, whatever things are just. He says, think about these things. If it's praiseworthy, think on it. Be positive. Don't worry about all that negative stuff. It has nothing to do with you. You are the center of your own world. You have control of the thoughts that you come in, that comes in your mind, and you are the one who's filtering what feelings or emotions are attached to them. Quit attaching your stuff to stuff that means nothing. It might be an issue, but it's not your problem. Thank you, Pastor V. It might be an issue, but don't make it your problem. The girl yell, oof. Huh. I'm praying for you. Come on, y'all know what it. That was the head of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. I'm praying for it. But don't make it your problem. It's just an issue for who? Because the event is what? Neutral. Because that's how they saw the event affect them. It changes their emotions and everything. And we so culpable, we get tied up in emotions. They ain't nothing got nothing to do with us. And then we go, well, you know, I'm going to go over here and help them the best I can. And then you're trying to figure out why hell breaking loose in your life because you in some stuff you shouldn't even be in. God didn't tell you to go over there. You felt emotionally tied to it because you went through a similar experience and you're going to help them through this. And God ain't told you nothing about none of that. He told you stay in your own little world Let them deal with their emotions Because just like I'm teaching you to deal with your stuff I'm trying to teach them to deal with their stuff But you keep taking their stuff away from them So they end up back in the same place Are y'all with me? And so let me talk about the trap of negative thinking right quick Because it's a trap we call it a rabbit hole. You get in there and it seem like every time you hop, you hopping into another hole. You can't get out. You can't. Now you're in this long thing of negativity because you just can't seem to reset. It's not by coincidence. This is this. Your body knows that. It is chemicals that is producing. When you go into negativity, your body produces a chemical to keep you there. So what happened? So when you go into that negativity, your body produces anxiety. It is, that is a natural reaction to negativity you're going to have anxiety. Come on, somebody. And so when you understand that, that anxiety is going to lead you to depression, oppression. And, 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 and me and uh, Pastor V was talking, and, and she was listening to the, uh, a podcast or something, and the man said, <clears throat> listen, let me tell you about being mad. That's not a natural experience to get mad. That's why they said you're going mad. He said, when you go mad, there's going to be a time you go mad and can't come back. Because your body is not designed to deal with that. That's why when you go into negativity, the, 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 it triggers anxiety and those things because your body is trying to fight or trying to level off or trying to, to deal with it and it can't. So those of you who go off, you're going to go off one day and can't come back. So when you feel that anger coming, you better get in some positivity, pull out a scripture, start praying and saying no this is no longer going to be me. He didn't wash the dishes like I want them. Then you wash them. That's simple. Well, when I vacuum, the lines go this way. 
and it makes the house look right. But I'm going to eat doing it this way. And I'm sick of this. And he puts the taller paper on in the back row. And it's going to be up and around. Come on, somebody. And that is taking you out of your comfort. I don't care what the longest toilet paper in there. And if you won't be nice enough and roll it up and pop it off in pieces so I won't roll it all up too much off, I'm fine with that too. You Because you cannot allow your mind to control. You have to take control. And in the big scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. When they're in the coffin in front of you, you crying over toilet paper. What does it matter? And you know what that is? That is your filtering system. You were raised a certain way. They weren't in the house with you. Or they would be called your brother. They would know that it should be this way or you grew up with it this way or like that. They don't know. So the way I was raised is totally different. And so you can't get mad and cancel out my whole life for your life. Come on, y'all. You have to control your thoughts. Yes, I don't have a mom. I have a mom now, but I didn't have. So I don't have the experience of having a relationship with a mother. You understand me? So I know mothers and daughters and sons can get on each other nerves but don't let that send you off the deep end at the end of the day it's all forgivable why because god giving you a chance to breathe leave that stuff look at uh one thing uh pastor v taught me she said see it and don't see it See it and don't see it. I see it. Mm -hmm. And I keep walking. <laughs> and then she come back. Did you see that? I sure did. But why didn't you? Ain't nothing to do with me. I, I, was, I was waiting to see what it ain't going to be. And that's the best way to live. See it. And you do not have to fix everybody's situation. You do not have to comment on everything that's said. You don't have to be a part of everything. Save yourself. Oh, my God. Are y'all with me? Okay. So this is what Jesus said in Mark. He says, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. So there's nothing outside of you. She just made me sick. No. It's already in you. And they may have shown you a trigger of something that's in you that need to be healed. But because we have been conditioned to project and deflect on other people, it's your fault. It's your fault that I'm in this person. It's your fault I don't have toys for my children for Christmas. It's your fault you a church in the community. I thought y'all supposed to be helping. Well, who are you? The first time I ever met you. You live in this community? Yeah, so how come you don't come to church? To see what we do. But it's our fault. And everybody else's fault. For everything that is happening in our lives. But it's really inside of me. Already. That is manifesting itself. Outside. So my life look exactly. How I believe. 
Now, tell somebody no more negative thinking. No more. Let me change that. No more stinking thinking. No more. And let me tell you something. This is another thing that they say is a foo-foo and the church shouldn't be teaching. And it's the power of visualization. That's insanity. God even called those things or not as though they were. You have to visualize in order to get there. You have to see it in order to uh, achieve it. And so you have to visit. So when sometimes you ever visualize something, it became so clear. So like you're like, oh, my God, I almost feel like I can touch. You just like, holy smoke. And then you find this, this thing kicks off something inside of you that you have never felt before. And everywhere you go, you are seeing the very thing that you are trying to experience. Why? Because God is leading you and he is in your imaginations and he has now shifted your filters so your filters will concentrate on that what needs to be concentrating on. Come on, somebody. So you have to be able to visualize what God is getting ready to do. Stop saying, well, anyway, he blessed me, going to be all right. That's foolishness. That's your cop out. So you don't have to use your imagination. Use your imagination and pull together what you want and say, I'm going to focus i'm going to be intentional because this is what i want and i'm not going to stop till i see it physically y'all with me so let me close with this you have to choose choose you have to choose empowering thoughts this is not natural you have to choose empowering thoughts. Naturally, we have been conditioned to believe negatively. You have to choose empowering thoughts. When event happens that shocks your world, you have to choose in this moment. I'm going to choose something empowering. I'm going to Choose what God is saying. You have to reframe setbacks as learning opportunities. You have to choose to do that. Because most of us, if we suffer a setback, here we're going in sackcloth and ashes, and we're going to have to lay on somebody's altar for the next month. You have to choose and says, this setback is a learning opportunity for me to what? Strengthen my belief. You can build resistance to negativity by choosing empowering thoughts. And people get sick and tired of you, which is fine. But you keep choosing empowering thoughts because we're conditioned to believe when something negative happened, I'm going to draw to somebody in like fashion who's going to pep me up. He's okay. He's going to care. We're going to be all right. Girl, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. You know that happened to me too. Yeah. It took me seven years to, before I recover. So now what did you just do to this person? You have to say, baby, I am so sorry that happened to you. But let me tell you. Let's move. Let's see if we can walk together and push. Let you got to keep moving forward. Well, I need to sit here a moment. Okay, well, you call me when you're ready to move forward. And I'll help you move forward, but I can't sit here with you. 
Because if I sit here with you, my life is in stop. Why your life is in stop. And I got too many things God has for me to stop and sit with you in this moment. Now, I'll hold space for you. So the more before I move further and the low you sit back there, I'm just going to hold that space. And when you're ready, I'm going to run back, grab you by the hand, and we're going to keep going. But I'm not going to sit with you back here. And I understand you're different from me, and you need 10 years to, to heal. Fine. I'll come back in 10 years and check on you. But I can't stop my life for you. So tell somebody, you got to choose empowering God. Events are always neutral. No matter what's happening in your life, it is always neutral. To you, it may not seem that way. But to somebody else, they're like, because it's neutral, it has no effect on them. They're like, oh, they lost their house. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm going to pray for them. To you, you're broken up. And they're telling you, no, you can't come stay here. Come on, somebody. Because it, it's neutral to them. So events are always neutral. I'm going to close with Philippians 4, 4 through 9. It says, rejoice always in the Lord. Positive thinking. Rejoice always in the Lord. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all let your gentleness be evident so that's the that's a way of living i'm gentle to all to the because the lord is near he says be not anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your quest be known to God and the peace of God. Listen to this. Don't get this. Don't, don't mix it. He says, you make your request known. He didn't say you got the answer right away. He says, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart's and mine in Jesus Christ. In other words, is once you make your request known, all the, the 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 blessings of God is a yes. You allow the peace of Christ to hold you until the manifestation. You keep a positive, and so when it doesn't look like it's going to happen, you say to yourself. Well, he came to that man life and have it more abundantly. He said, there's no good thing he'll withhold from me. That's your peace. You don't have to fight with that. You don't have to debate it. That's the word of God. That's truth. And that's it. You tell yourself, mm -mm. mind, thoughts, mm -mm. we're not going there. The peace of God. You have to believe it. The peace of God would transcend. You're going to have a peace that you don't even understand. Will keep your hearts until the manifestation. Tell somebody the power of our thoughts.